on September 1st, we thought, you know, we might have to be planning a funeral instead of getting a nursery ready, so. Whenever she called me, like, like, it's, it's, it's just tough because, you know, like as a man, like we should, we should try to do everything. Like, you know, I can't I can do nothing other than just hold her hand. You know, it's for a reason. The Lord has put you here for a reason and it, everything's in the Lord's hands and we just gotta be faithful. I guess you kind of always go into pregnancy thinking that something could happen, but you never really expect that to happen to you. Um, then, especially since everything was so easy with Ethan the first time around, so um, then last year had a miscarriage, and that was really hard for all three of us. And so when we found out we were pregnant again, we were really excited, and Ethan was really excited. Um, and you you get through every appointment kind of in the back of your mind, wondering like, is it going to be okay? Is it going to be okay? And then with each ultrasound, everything looks good. Um, then we got to our 20-week anatomy scan and found out there was um, no amniotic fluid and he was missing his kidneys. So she sent me to a specialist and he confirmed they had bilateral renal agenesis, which is no kidneys and um, low amounts of amniotic fluid. And historically, it's 100% lethal, um, not necessarily just because of the kidneys, but because of the lack of fluid um, not allowing the lungs to develop. So, um, they basically told us we had one to two weeks and expect him to pass away uh, in utero and didn't really leave us with any options because uh, typically your options are termination or just carry the pregnancy as far as you can and then expect to have a stillborn birth. So we found um, Johns Hopkins has a, a research trial basically for, um, for situations kind of like ours where either there's partial kidney failure or complete kidney failure. The reality is we're going to be in a situation where our child is on dialysis for two years and needs a kidney transplant. So um, so right now, every four days, we're going down to Houston to get amnium fusions um, so that his lungs can continue to develop. And he's actually doing really well. In the next three weeks or so, we have to plan to be in Houston full time um, in case I have to be on bed rest in the hospital. Financial support is our biggest need right now. We don't it's hard to say what our needs are because we don't really know. Every day is kind of different and um, we just kind of have to focus on it one day at a time. It literally is going to take everyone we know just supporting us and being on our, our side to get through this because we don't even know how big of a deal this is and what we're about to get into. But Five Stone has been really encouraging. Um, so it's been really helpful to have just a community of people that come around you and care for you and take care of you. and cards and let you know that they're they're thinking about you and they're praying for you you know just the relief of prayer that, that relief the prayer has on you and that you know that God is with you and then also you have like a people that that's there you know to spiritually support you and then you know you're not alone and the extra care that people have been checking on Ethan and making sure that he's doing good too because he's in this as well um, that's meant a lot to us People praying scripture over you and just praying yeah. truth over you, um, just kind of defeating the lies of the enemy because it's easy to let fear and doubt creep in yeah. in a situation like this. But uh, for people constantly just like refocusing your mind on you know what's true is has been really encouraging and helpful. I think for both of us, and that's yeah. really been a huge blessing to know that um, it's just been like a huge encouragement to know that people are there for you yeah. when you need them. Yeah.